Good day my fellow younglings and welcome back to Regen Rovers. Today it is episode 36 in the series. We're whizzing through aren't we? Before long we're going to be reaching 100 episodes which would be a magnificent total. I've never reached a series of 100 episodes so it looks like we're on track to easily smash that unless something goes disastrously wrong like I get sacked or I die. Today we are taking on Chester and York City, two away games, so you won't actually have seen a match in our stadium yet. Unless, of course, you come along to the matches, you fans, you, you season ticket holders, there's a lot more this year. We've trebled the, the season ticket sales this year, which is marvellous news. We're up to over 150 of you come in every week, which is fantastic to see. You can see there, we haven't won a game in the National league yet unfortunately but we have managed to pick up a couple of draws it's going to be a tough season you guys know that you can't be expecting too much from me at this stage no pull out golden fm out banners this year please i say from from the depths of my heart we're, it's going to be a struggle we're going to be in a relegation battle we are bottom of the table heading into this game against chester today if we just have a look there we go I my my face is covering up Regen Rovers, but I can you, you can work out for yourself that Regen Rovers bottom of the table, two points after five games, minus seven goal difference. The defence has gone from one extreme to the other. Last year it was so solid, and this year it is just terrible. But what do you expect, really? It, it's predictable. It was going to be this way. And we've faced some pretty tough teams so far, generally towards the top of the table. Of course, in that episode, in episode 35, we did lose against AFC Filed 4-1. Um, and then after that, I, I I went to look for some transfers, some new signings to try and improve the team. And I have brought in a new right wing back. Tim Green came in straight away, which was fortunate because Halcroft got injured in that first game and was out for the next few games. He is back today. But Tim Green looks quite good, to be honest, if not more suited to the wing back role than Halcroft looking at him he's got decent crossing and tackling of eight you know okay not not terrible um heading uh passing 10 he's, he's quite average at quite a few things he works hard which is always useful for a wing back i think he's not the paciest guy in the world but he's not the slowest guy in the world essentially he's very average but that's kind of what we need in the team right now average players that don't let us down he's done okay in, in his first few games and i've brought in wes roach he, I, I love a Wesley. My late uh, grandfather was called Wesley, although that was his middle name. It was William Wesley, but everyone called him Wes. Uh, so yeah, good old, good old, good, good name, Wes. I must say, Wesley. Oh, it's just got that random factor factor to it, which I like. Anyway, I, I digress. I do that a bit too often. Wes Roach. He's on loan from Derby County. I've, I've brought him in because I feel like I need to be playing a defensive midfielder this year. I'm not sure Gareth Sheriff is, is up to it anymore. He's in the reserves. Things are going down for him. He's, he's probably similar to Wes Roach in a way. I might have to draft Gareth Sheriff back into the first team. But his career is going down the drain, <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, last year he wasn't playable because I didn't have a defensive midfielder in my tactic. Uh, Wes Roach, um, he's, he's similar to Gareth, Gareth Sheriff, I guess. He's very determined. He's got good leadership, very good bravery, which, bravery, which is useful for a defensive midfielder, I think. Aggression and tackling of 11, that's useful as well. He's also quite a good free kick taker and corner kick taker, which could be beneficial for us. However, I haven't been playing him defensive midfield since I signed him. Anyway, those are the two new signings since the last episode. Uh, we went from that AFC Fouled game after... A, yeah, away from home, it wasn't it wasn't great. So our first ever competitive game at Regen Rover Stadium in Rygate was a 4-1 loss. We got off to a good start against the league leaders. They are they are winning the league, five wins from five. Cheltenham, they were going to be tough, but I I was optimistic because we took an eighth minute lead, and you can see there they didn't get the equaliser until the 56th minute, and that was a penalty. Now, penalties have been a problem for us so far this season. I will talk about that in a bit more detail in a second. I've got some almonds in my mouth. Just had just had a mouthful of almonds to, you know, give me a bit of energy for this video. And now the skins are going everywhere. But this was a nice um, nice goal. Chick setting up Stora. I brought Stora into the team and decided to give him a go. And he repaid me with this first goal of the season for him. But like I said, they just, they were too much for us in the end. 
and they scored four goals in 21 minutes and that punished us. My defence is a problem. Danny Bai gave away a penalty, got a 5.6 rating in this game. Tr disaster for him. Sivzelis, to be honest, without him in goal, we would have conceded a lot more goals this season. He has pulled off some very good saves. And he hasn't, I don't think he's been at fault for any of the goals. So he went to Macclesfield Town and got a very impressive draw away from home against them. This is actually, in the first four games, they didn't concede against anyone apart from us. This was the first, the only goal they conceded this season. They might have conceded in the fifth game, I haven't checked. But uh, they completely dominated. They destroyed it. Sivzelis, though, pulled off some unbelievable saves. He even got a stubbed finger towards the end of his, towards the end of this game. But, crucially, we conceded another 56th minute penalty. Very strange. This time Adam Fox gave it away. But it was very controversial, in my opinion. I don't think it was a penalty. But Spencer Drury, with his first goal for the club, saved the day. This was Tim Green's second match for us. And he actually got an assist. Did really well with the second cross. Left-footed in. Drury headed it home. I don't think Tim Green's left-footed as well, is he? No, he is right-footed. Good. We don't, we don't want two left-footed wing back, right wing backs, do we? But you can see here, statistically, they just pummeled us. Six clear-cut chances to our zero. Three half chances. Sivzelis, 7.5. He was magnificent at times in this match. They should really, we should release a DVD of his saves in that match. It was just a penalty that defeated him. Halifax Town. Such a harsh result. You can see, statistically, we were their equals. We had less possession, but shots-wise, we were definitely in this game. We com committed a lot of fouls. That seems to be the way we get results this season. And Spencer Drury scored his second goal of the season in the 70th minute. I was on cloud nine. I thought we were going to win our first game of the season. This is um, So this is the goal. It's a lovely finish, lovely left-footed finish. That's why I bought him. He's a poacher. But that was from outside the box, so that wasn't even a poacher's goal. But we conceded another penalty. This time it was Reese Walker. Every single centre-back I put into this team gives away a penalty. And it got them back into the game. And then in the 89th minute, a free kick. So it's set pieces that are letting us down this year, strangely enough. In the last, last season, we didn't really suffer from set pieces. I don't really remember conceded many penalties. It's particularly not three penalties in three games. Well, it's just ridiculous. I don't know why. And then against um, Kidderminster Harriers. This was a topsy-turvy game. But it was set pieces that let us down at the end of the day once again. They took the lead in the first half. It was a as a result of a throw-in, really. And no one picked up the man in the box. Disruvre. Who managed to score. Emmanuel. Managed to score the opening goal. They, they, I guess they deserved to get something from this game. Considering how many shots... And their possession was much better than ours. But Christian Marlow did get an equaliser. And it's it's a lovely goal. Mackenzie out wide to Winter who came into the team for Warren for this game. And got an assist. Marlow at the back post finding the back of the net. And then we actually went 2-1 up in the first half. Mackenzie into Drury. Lovely ball into Marlow. And he got the, the assist for Orford. He got his second goal of the season. He was injured, I think, as well. But he came back and scored in this game. But then they equalised again. Before half-time, it was a free kick. It went back to the free kick taker, whipped the ball in. Once again, no one at the back post marking this guy, Hodgkiss, who scored. Chick did come on to the, to the pitch to score his first goal in this division for us since signing for us officially. It was a lovely goal as well. Uh, a good assist from Orford as well. So 3-2 up, I was thinking, oh, come on, this is the one. This is the win we have wanted. We have strived for this season. But 85th minute, from a corner, another set piece. I mean, we got rid of the first ball. We seem to be getting rid of the first attempt from the set piece. But it's the second ball into the box that we just don't seem to be picking up our men. And Hodgkiss got his second goal of the game. And it finished 3-3, so, ah, oh, so painful. But surely today, maybe, one of these games against Chester or York City, can we win a game for the first time this season? Most sensational news so far, Jack Young is back. He's been injured for eight months. And uh, four, five weeks ago, he started rehab, and he's ready to play. He's not match fit, but he is physically fit to play. 
Um, overall physical condition, 95%. It's just match sharpness that obviously hasn't played for eight months. He was meant to be injured for between nine to 11 months, and he's come back two or three weeks earlier than the, the minimum time he would be out injured. It shows how determined he is to help Regen Rose, to help our cause. He's a remarkable chap, isn't he, Jack Young? What a legend. Oh, I love Jack Young, as as I'm sure most of you guys do as well. Um, actually, let's not continue that yet. This is the team then to take on Chester. I'm putting him on, putting him on the bench. If we need a Jack Young special, he's going to come off and and deliver the goods. I hope. Sibzelis, of course, is in goal. The only player really in the defence to make a name for himself in this division. He's got a 6.96 average rating despite conceding all those goals this season. It shows how important he has been. If if he hadn't been there. Would have lost every game and would have conceded about seven goals every game. <laughs> I'm going with Lofts, By and Fox at the back. Reese Walker has been very disappointing. Most of the defence have been. Most disappointingly of all, Danny By, after his incredible season last year, is letting the team down. He's got a 6.36 average rating, which is actually the best out of our team, worryingly. Let's get this party started then against Chester. As always, please wallop that like button, the thumbs up button below this video. That'd be much appreciated. And I've got a question for you. I don't know if I've asked this before, but I'd like to know where in the world you're watching Regen Rovers from. Whether it be, you know, my bathroom and you're just spying on me this whole time, or you're across the road and you're looking through your window with your telescope at me making videos, or whether it be in New Zealand or Mozambique, wherever. Just just let me know in the comment section below. It's where are you watching Regen Rovers from? And if you're from afar, are you intending on coming to watch a Regen Rovers game in Rygate one day? That'd be fantastic if you were able to. So Chester are playing three up front. They're playing three in midfield. And like I, oh, I didn't actually introduce the team properly, did I? I, I started and then and forgot. Um, okay, here's, here's the introduction now. So yeah, lost by a fox at the back. Holmes in defence and midfield. So we're playing one of our centre backs. He can play defence midfield, and that's why I've stuck in there. And he's played very well the last couple of games, despite the fact we have conceded a few goals. How cross back in the team on the right uh, wing back role seems to have dropped off since his injury, which is a bit of a shame. Warren's back at left wing back because Winter's a little bit tired. We only played a, a few uh, three days ago, in fact. Mackenzie, the American, is in central midfield for us. Let's hope he pulls off something special. Uh, alongside Marlowe, of course. And then Orford and Storer up front. Now, I've dropped Spencer Drury to out of the team today. I want to rest him. And he hasn't. He didn't score in the last game. Um, I want to play Storer alongside Orford to see how that works. Hopefully, this midfield will be able to stop their midfield. But wish me luck. We, we will need it. We, we need luck in every single game this season. Chester will be a tough team. The morale's low for most of my team, apart from Marlowe and Lofts. Uh, Lofts is pleased to be back in the team, I think. That's probably why his morale's gone up. Sorry if you heard my phone making noises once again. It's, it's unacceptable, I know. Come on, you regens. Come on, you younglings. Here comes Storup. That was bizarre. Heading it out of play. There's a look at the burger van over there. Fancy getting one. Do you imagine if you just see your manager wandering over, slowly getting obese? Every game just getting bigger and bigger. So we're bottom of the table. Can we turn this around today? I hope you're looking forward to the big day out feature. I haven't been to Chester before. Maybe one day. I hear it's a nice place to live. All the footballers live in that region, don't they? All the ones that play for like Man United and Liverpool, they go down to Chester and live there. Ah, oh, well, we're playing well at the moment. I'm going to say unlucky so far. We haven't done anything. They haven't done anything. That's the main thing, though. Let's just keep it going. There's no reason to change it. They apparently had eight shots and three half chances. We haven't seen anything, though. But that suits me nicely. OK, a highlight, which Fox will take. Adam Fox into Marlowe. Good ball, actually, but Marlowe gives it away. It's into Holmes. Mackenzie, it's raining now, so it's a little bit tricky for the players to get hold of the ball properly. We've got muddy boots and, and socks and everything at this level and we've given the ball away but Fox does very well with that header Holmes back to Danny by it's out to how Holcroft can't get on the end of that and um, this might be an opportunity for Chester after all but Holmes intercepts brilliantly there it's into Orford it's into Stara he should have scored that and he's coming off for that maybe if that had been 
Drury, that would have been a goal. But then again, Storer's got better finishing. He's got 12 on finishing, but his composure's a bit lower. Jack Young. It has to be done. Jack Young is coming on to save the day. He's back. He's back. What do I say? I'm going to say pressure's off today. I want you to go out there and play your natural game. No pressure, Jack Young. You've had a massive injury. But if you can give us a favour, do us a favour, and win us this game, that would be just written in the stars, wouldn't it? But it looks like it's going to be opportunity for Chester here. After our... Oh, not another pen... What is going on with the penalties? Seriously. I don't understand. Fox has given away a second penalty of the season. I, I really don't get this. And it's it's gone in. No penalties have been saved now. It's gone from one extreme to the other on the game since the beta. Nothing is saved. Siv Zellis can't get anywhere near them. And we are going to have to go attacking now to... To try and get back into this game. We'll go expressive as well. Oh, my Four penalties we've given. We're not helping ourselves defensively. By giving away penalties every match. I don't know what's happened. Last season there was no problem with giving away penalties. We weren't just making rash tackles in the box. I've changed nothing. I've not said dive into tackles or get stuck in. Or anything like that. Suddenly we're giving away penalties for no apparent reason. It's very frustrating. I'm going to throw Chick on up front. The strikers, I mean... At, looking at their um, average rating, they really haven't been that bad today. we we'll play Jack Young in his preferred advanced forward role. Mackenzie is knackered. He's going to have to come off, I think. Although, let's keep him on. We'll, we'll take off Holmes. He's on a yellow. We'll bring on Wes Roach. Wesley, our guy on loan from Derby. And we're going to have to pump it up the pitch to Chick, I think. Let's just exploit the middle, pump it up the pitch. So disappointing when you, when you lose to a penalty. And the fact that we've conceded so many this year, it's like some sort of glitch has occurred and we have to concede a penalty every game. It doesn't make any sense. Come on, Jack Young, be the hero. I don't think we're going to have any opportunities, are we? That chance for Stora was the one. Oh, will we have an opportunity to save the day? Marlow into Jack Young. It's back to Roach. It's through to Winter. He crosses it in. It's Chick at the back post. Chick is the hero. He gets us back in this game with three minutes to go. This could be a crucial draw. I will turn it off a notch. We'll, we'll just go back to counter. Some of you get a bit annoyed with me when I change it straight away. But we can't leave on overload, can we? We'll get pummeled from kickoff. But this is a lovely assist from Warren. It's in a way, you'd think it's too, too deep, but that is an insane header from that angle from Chick. That is brilliant. And possibly has saved us a couple of points, but there's a corner here. Headed away brilliantly by Bai. Lofts has actually played quite well, 6.9. bai has got a 6. Point, oh, he's gone up to 6.8 because of that header. I'm not sure why Fox has got a 6.8 considering he gave away a penalty. But overall, a really positive result. A draw away from home. That's what we need to get. And I'm pleased with that. Jack Young is back in the team. He didn't do anything. We didn't see him do anything. He got 6.6, .6, but we didn't see him do anything bad or, or anything good. But it's good to have him back. And it's great to see Chick scoring a goal as well. I think the goals are really going to be shared around the strikers this year. I don't think there's going to be anyone running away with it. Just like last year, really. Massive news, by the way. Uh, a few days ago, Eddie Mitchell said he was planning on stepping down as chairman. And we could get bought out for the second time in this series which it would be pretty insane if we're brought out for the second time in f four years but you can see here consortium plans younglings takeover that i hope they've got a little bit of money and they're not just some consortium group of footballers like doddington and and aqua getting together to try and buy the football club that'd be pretty disastrous probably means we can't sign any players at the moment which is okay i think i'm relatively happy with the squad now it's a decent size Beforehand, it was looking a little bit slim, but we've got plenty of players in there. And of course, we've got players in the under 23s that can come up as well. I have streamlined the team, though. Still lots of under 18 players in there. A lot of them will probably uh, be leaving the club soon when their, well, when their um, youth contracts run out, I guess. So I asked Jack Young to play in the under 23s match. Unfortunately, he didn't play very well. 6.4 against Hampton and Richmond Borough under 23s. This guy scored for us, a uh, under-18s player. Where's Roach? I got him to play as well, and he played pretty well. He got the assist. It's time for Paul's big day out, then. Away we go. <music> yep, 
Yes, York City. I, I hadn't been to York until this year, until August in fact, and I visited it twice now on business with my job. Um, I can't say I was meeting. A lot of the work I do is sort of confidential. We can't really talk about it publicly. It's a big a big company based based in York that I visited anyway, that you would definitely have heard of, everyone's heard of. It's a lovely city, it really is. I love those sort of historic cities, in, historic English British cities. Beautiful. Walked along the walls after the meeting. Went to Betty's both times, in fact. Famous tea room there. Yeah, really, really would recommend going to York. <laughs> Anyway, enough of that because we're going to go and beat York City today, away from home. Do I change the team? Do I change the back line after Fox gave away a penalty? I don't think so. They only conceded one goal. We're going to keep Reese Walker on the bench. It's a shame. I really want this guy to turn out to be... He looks good. Attribute-wise, he looks very good. And I'm sure he'll get back into the team soon and, and hold a place there. He could even play central midfield, I guess. I'm going to keep McKenzie there. He's not got a very good average rating so far, the American. But we're going to stick him... Alongside Marlowe, Holmes will keep his place in defensive midfield. He's got a 6.8 average rating there. It's not bad going. Howcroft on the right. Warren, I guess, should stay on the left. He got the assist in the last match. And I'm actually going to change the strike force again. We're going to bring Spencer Drury back into the team. Chick and Young. I'm, go I'm going to take Young out today. Sorry, guys, but he's, he's not quite fit enough yet. I wanted to play him against Chess to bring him off the bench in the hope that he would do something special for us. So we didn't get the Hollywood moment, unfortunately. But maybe he'll be back and scoring goals very soon. So I will put Stora on the bench with Chick. Roach is quite tired. I'm going to put Dion Mills on the bench today. We've got so much choice up front that it, it does, if one player's not playing well, we can just bring someone else in. That's the beauty of having so many strikers. And I was intending on playing up three up front. If we get used to this, acclimatised to this uh, division and start playing well, then I will go back to the three up front tactic because we're not... I find, I find it very difficult to find defensive midfielder regents that are up to the standard we require now. Even the players I have signed. Wes Roach, he's not up to this standard whatsoever. Gareth Sheriff isn't. Holmes isn't really up to the standard required for, my, for being a defensive midfielder for this team, for this division. I'm coming up a lot of four three threes at the moment. So I would rather play three up front for that reason that I just can't seem to find a decent defensive midfielder anywhere that wants to come. The ones that are decent just don't want to talk to me whatsoever or want £1,000 £1, a week, which is just too much. Let's, uh, that's motivated then. That's good. We'll keep it on counter-structured. Let's pray for a miracle. We've got Sylvester, of course. Hopefully he can inspire us to victory. George the Cat is next door having a sleep on his little seat. Howcroft with the corner. Every corner. I swear I haven't made them go short corners. But we might still have an opportunity here. Drury gives it to Marlow. He's, oh, that was an opportunity. If we got rid of... If Drury had passed the ball quicker. Uh, this is an open... Op oh, it's a, it's a... Is that saved by Siv Zealous? I don't think so. It was wide. But we, we escape there. A narrow escape. What was I talking about? Corners. We just were terrible at corners at the moment. I think I need to have a look. As we go 1-0 down, I need to have a look at the corner routines. This is probably going to be a thrashing today. York are a very good team at this level. In real life, they're struggling, I think, in the conference. But they, on the game, they sh they're probably better than how they're doing in real life. Can we get back into this? McKenzie gives it away in midfield. Is this going to be a second already? Defence is all over the place, but we've managed to recover. It's a good ball in, and it's 2 now. Yeah, that wasn't good. Let's watch this. It's, it's just no one... Maybe I need to close down the players. Okay, I'm going to get them to close down. Close down. Let's push the defence up a bit. Let's get rid of that. We're just going to go more direct, I think. Not pump. We'll just go direct. I've only had one shot in this game. It's not a good day for us. We're back to bottom of the table. Sad times. I'm going to say I'm disappointed. They could have played much better in this game. Orford's not been very good. I'm going to bring Chick on. And we'll play him as a target man. Go for the 
Chick might need, might be very important for us this season as a target man. And I'm going to go attacking. I might go three up front halfway through the, the second half if I feel like there is an opportunity to get back into this game. Ah, wow, well, don't go to York anymore, guys. They're, they're thrashing Regen Rovers. Disgraceful behaviour from them. Sivs Ellis pumps it up the pitch to Chick, who wins the header. Did really well there, but unfortunately it didn't go to the right person. It went to them. And now they can control the game here. They've got the... The better players, they can keep hold of the ball. And what's Warren going to do here? It's back to Sivzella, so he slashes it up the pitch again. But unfortunately, we're giving it away. And this is going to be a third, I think. It's wide. Ooh, we escape there. There might be an opportunity to get back into this. Holmes is going to come off for Stora. And we're going to put Stora up there. We're going to play him as an advanced forward. We're just going to go route one now, I think. Maybe tighter marking. Just We're just not good enough at marking. And that's our problem in defence at the moment. Maybe I should just turn that off. 30 minutes to save this game. I don't think it's going to happen, but you never know. They've got a, a green burger van at York. Chester had a red one, I think. That's that's the highlight of this second half, me talking about burger vans again. 15, oh, just over 15 minutes to go. Are we going to get a goal? Looks like it's going to be another goal for York. Now we've got rid of our defensive midfielder. And it's three, it's all over. I've gone to control rather than attacking. I meant to... Control. We can't control a game, Paul. What are you thinking? Let's get a consolation goal. We've scored in every goal game so far this season. And we do again. It's an own goal. But I'll take it. You know, there's, there's an opportunity here. Five minutes to go. If we can get another goal, you never know. Bayer does really well there. It's into Star who gives the ball away. He does seem to give the ball away a bit too much, Star. I've noticed this season. And this is going to be a fourth. Oh, it's over the bar. 22 shots to them. Four clear-cut chances. Five half, half chances. We've had nine shots, but no real chances in this game. Says it all, really, doesn't it? The, the gap in the quality between the Conference South and the, the National League Premier is obvious. It's very obvious to me that there's a massive difference between the quality and the players. We're playing. We're coming up against professional teams now. I think York are a professional team as they make it 4-1. And that is a massive difference at this level because you can sign players on full-time contracts. They're training every day, every week. They're earning more money. They're more motivated. They're better players generally. And yeah, this is going to be our third 4-1 defeat of the season. But don't worry. We're away from home. We're expected to get thrashed by some of these teams. So don't be too disheartened, guys. Don't be too angry or upset. We can turn this around. If we can just claw the odd away draw and then start to win games at home, then perhaps we can escape by the skin of our teeth. We're, it's still, we're only seven games in. It's still very close at the bottom of the table. We're three points off safety. We don't have the worst goal difference in the, in the league. We've got the second worst. Uh, and we've actually conceded the, the joint most goals as well. But there is a little bit of hope. If we can beat the likes of Havens and Waterloo or Tranmere, who struggled last season. They're a professional team, but but they have struggled last season. Lincoln City. They're pro who's not... Pro who's pro who is... Uh, so Havens and Waterloo who came up with us semi-pro. Harrogate... Semi-pro, Dagenham and Redbridge are pro, of course. Grimsby Town are pro. Kidderminster, pro. Macclesfield, Ch I think everyone else is, is professional, aren't they? Braintree might not be. Yeah, Braintree is semi-pro. But everyone else would be professional, I'm sure. Barrow, yeah. <laughs> it is, we really are up against it. Let's look at the odds, actually. Uh, yeah, we're still 1,000 to 1. <laughs> this is going to be really hard, but... With your support, guys, and maybe a, a, a better defensive tactic. I don't want to go too crazy. I want to keep this because it obviously worked in the level below. Well, th the three up front one did. Maybe this, and this one did to a certain extent. We just got too many draws with it. The defence just let me down. It's really strange. Last season, they were so solid. This year, against better quality players, they just can't do it. It's fortunate that we've actually got decent defenders. If we had defenders who were as poor as some of our other members of the team, then then we'd be getting really, really thrashed. Then again, it might be because the midfield are so weak that they're not helping out the defence. And that's why the, the defence are almost the scapegoats here. They're getting pummeled because the midfield are not really doing their job, maybe. 
I'll have to investigate. Anyway, the next episode, not exactly sure when it will be, but I'll play five or six games as usual, and then we'll come back. I think I will show the Haventon Waterlooville and Dagenham and Redbridge games because they're both in the relegation zone with us. Although that, <laughs> once again, they're both away games. So I want to show a home game at Regen Rovers Stadium. Um, I might show Harrogate. I'll have a think. But thanks for watching today's episode. Please smash that like button once again. We picked up one point. It's okay. Let me know where in the world you are from in the comment section below. And I will see you in episode 37.